What does it mean when Special Counsel Smith sends a target letter like this? Well, let me tell you from a, from a uh, perspective of a defense lawyer, the last thing you ever want in the world is to get a target letter, because a target letter means to you you're done, it means you're going to get indicted, um, and it doesn't get sent. You know, it's not like a subpoena. Uh, prosecutors can send subpoenas out like it's nothing. Um, but a target letter is a big deal, and it's a big deal when they receive it in the Trump camp. It must have set off an awful lot of alarms, meaning what do we do next because I'm about to be indicted? And from a prosecutorial perspective, you mentioned uh, both sides, but is it a bigger deal to try to go at the conduct of a sitting president? I went through the distinctions here in the other cases. Well, never having gone after a sitting president, yeah. it's hard to say. It certainly is a historic moment um, because, you know, you, you, it, it, and it's a sad moment, right? And I think from mm -hmm. a prosecutor's standpoint, it's a sad moment, too, that as a prosecutor, I have to do this. I have to make this type of history. It's a sad state of affairs, but it has to be done, and we're going to do it by dotting the I's and crossing the T's, and that's why we sent the, the, the target letter. And, Christy, uh, to the same point, you have to have good evidence if you're in those shoes because, again— Part of the Mar-a-Lago case, and we'll get to they, they had a hearing today, is telling the defendant and the jury he's not president anymore. So he's trying to president, right? He's trying to do classified stuff, nuclear stuff. He's not president. That seems to be a pretty clear line. Here, you have to have enough evidence to, to be able to repel the defense lawyers or the jury's feeling of, well, can a sitting president ask the DOJ to look into things? I mean, can't can he hold a, a meeting? Uh, is that, in that sense, a higher bar, and do you think Smith has the goods? I think he has the goods. I, I think what we're looking at here are very clear paths that the special counsel has to moving forward. You have forged documents with this fake elector scheme. That is not something that would be within presidential duties or immunities. This is something where you have clear fraudulent conduct. You then have trying to stop the count, trying to obstruct a proceeding before Congress. Again, not something that's within his presidential duties. And then the last one, looking to incite an insurrection, you know, inflaming his base and then sitting on his hands and doing nothing when violence broke out. So none of these things are presidential. He's not going to have any kind of defensive privilege or immunity for any of these acts if he's charged with them. He would say, we'll expect his lawyers to say, well, he can have a meeting with Pence. He can ask him to do things. He can have his lawyers come in. Oh, they have a certification. He could send his folks down there. Um, we've seen all these kind of lower stakes, but sort of silly arguments <clears throat> about who's a part of what branch and you, you oversee the Senate and, you know, without getting too far into a law school rabbit hole, they're going to be pushing back on Smith and all this stuff and saying, even if you stipulate he was incorrect, um, even if you stipulate that he was lying, politicians have been known to lie in both parties, um, you have to have more on him than just he held some meetings and wanted to go down to the Congress to make his final case. Yeah, I think I think it is more than that based on what's in the public record, right? So you, you have him, first of all, knowing that there was no election fraud. He was told mm -hmm. time and again by DOJ officials, by his own White House counsel, um, you know, by A.G. Barr, people he appointed told him there was no election fraud, yet he kept on saying it. He used it as a pretext for this plan. So then you have, yes, this fake elector scheme where there are people who are saying we were duly elected. That's just plainly false. Right. So again, you can have meetings, you can have intellectual conversations, but when you know that people are going in there and forging documents that are sent to an, a government agency, that's fraud, plain and simple. Yeah. And the mindset is interesting. Again, you can't use that as a defense to everything, but it seems to hurt Trump as a potential defendant, uh, David, that he did know he lost, that he'd been lying about a lot of things. You know, I don't know, did you ever see The Last Dance, the, the Michael Jordan documentary? Yeah. You get the feeling that Jordan sort of can hack his own brain and convince himself he's been disrespected, use it as fuel. Then later he says, ah, I knew, I knew, you know, I, I pushed that. Um, I wouldn't compare the two of them in many ways. Uh, but as far as delusion, let me play you some of the evidence, David, where, according to his own aides at the time, Trump would lie in public and then show consciousness of guilt, mental state privately. Ah, I know I lost, as he said it, regarding the now president, Biden. He said, ah, I can't believe I lost to this expletive guy. Take a look. So we're in the Oval. He says words to the effect of, yeah, we lost. We need to, we need to let that issue go to the next guy, meaning President Biden. And he was looking at the TV and he said, can you believe I lost to this effing guy? And I said, like, does the president really think that he lost? 
And he said, you know, a lot of times he'll tell me that he lost, but he wants to keep fighting it. So to the extent that he tries to propagate that, that he really, despite what they said, that he really did believe it, it's not a reasonable belief based on all the evidence, number one. Number two, and, and what Christy was talking about really speaks to, um, it's not just what, it, it's his corrupt intent that is going to undo him here. Because yes, he can have meetings. And yes, he can meet with Pres uh, Vice President Pence. And yes, he can suggest they look into election fraud. But when he knew that he lost and what he's asking them to do, there's a corrupt intent behind it. And that intent was to disrupt the, the, the functioning of Congress, to certify the election, and to essentially incite an insurrection. How important is it, do you think, uh, that there is potential accountability here for co-conspirators? Again, we don't have any charges yet. We have a target letter. But there is the implication that it would go out beyond Trump. Um, and we're living through a time where... He's running for office again. A lot of people have been asked to do things. Does it matter? Is it good for democracy if other people are held accountable? So even when they're in a big, powerful job, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, it's not open season. Right. So you have that unhinged meeting that happens in December. And it reminds me of Succession, where you have Logan Roy telling his children, I love you, but you're not serious people. And he brought in, Trump brought in a bunch of people who are not serious people to replace the serious people who were telling him, you lost, you can't declare martial law, you can't do all of these kinds of crazy things that you're thinking to try to steal the election. So he brings in a bunch of other people who will tell him what he wants to hear and help him execute a fraudulent plan. And so some of those were lawyers. You know, we know John Eastman, uh, Rudy Giuliani. And you can't hide behind a law degree to help your client commit a fraud, right? That's clearly illegal. So, And you see so many of these lawyers have lost their law licenses or being suspended or disbarred in their states because of that. Is so Sidney Powell then, is, is that Shiv or is that uh, Kendall? <laughs> uh, it's your comparison. I'm going to go with Kendall. Okay, Kendall. Got tortured, yes. Yeah. <laughs> any, any of the above? I never watched the show. <laughs> <laughs> You're too busy. Yeah, we get it. Yeah, <laughs> some of us watch it. What's HBO. interesting about this, Ari, is is um, that Trump is the only one reported to have received the target letter. Yep. Um, and it would be interesting. I, I think it'd be hard to conceal if others received the target letter. Now, not every target needs to get a target letter. But if you're going to give it to one, you likely give it to the other. But in the same time, I'd be really surprised if he went forward here and, and charged, particularly if it's a conspiracy case, only Trump. So it's it, a lot remains to be seen. Well, yeah, wouldn't you see? I mean, again, we're, we're going to be responsible about this. We don't have the reporting. Um, but but the indication would be that he'd have one or more other individuals unless they're super cooperative because um, you can have an unindicted co-conspirator. But would you look to Powell, Eastman, Giuliani, those types? Yes, those were the people that were referred from the House Select Committee. But what's interesting is within the last few hours, uh, attorneys for John Eastman and Rudy Giuliani both said they did not receive target letters. So maybe those are forthcoming, but uh, I know we'll be staying tuned. But it, it is interesting. I, yeah. I agree. You would expect if there were conspiracy charges, other co-conspirators to be charged. Yeah.